Let's talk about the SPICE process assessment method. Now the SPICE uh, process assessment method is, was developed within the International Standards Organization. SPICE stands for Software Process Improvement and Capability Determination. There's a long story about why it's an E and not a D, but I won't go into it at the moment. Um, now I have worked on committees that develop these things. I am a qualified SPICE assessor, uh, so I'll, I'll try to keep it fairly succinct because it's one of those things that I could rabbit on about for quite some time. So by the end of this, uh, you'll know a certain amount about the SPICE process assessment method, and you'll know about an, uh, an assessment class, the assessment team, the process itself, the data gathering, interpretation results, and the assessment record. Um, it might seem like, yeah, well, there's not much to it. In fact, it can get quite elaborate. So let's go on with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the purpose of an assessment, uh, SPICE assessment, is to determine the current state of the software development processes. That's the whole purpose of the assessment. Figuring out what to do with that information is a different matter, but the assessment uh, sets out to determine the current state of it. Now the level of assessment rigor depends on the assessment purpose. So um, a class one assessment is very high rigor uh, and it's a comparison across organizations. Um, it, it's a class one you would do uh, if, if there was some legal um, context to it. So possibly you're being asked to, do, to assess an organization and depending on that assessment, they will get given the contract or not. Now, in those circumstances, there's quite a lot writing on the result, and it needs to be very clearly um, done uh, and highly rigorous. Class two, medium rigor, the kind of thing that you do for comparing within an organization, um, comparing either within an organization with the same, the same part across time, so are we better than we were last year, or across different divisions. Um, not so rigorous. Uh, but rigorous enough. Class 3 is a fairly low rigor assessment and this is the kind of thing where somebody might do it just to see well, how, how are we going. Um, are we up to scratch? We'll go and find the, uh, any obvious problems. Formal assessment methods avoid common observation biases and that's important. So let's go through it. First we need to plan the assessment. Now the first thing we need to know is what actually does the client want? Um, <laughs> Nobody does an assessment just for fun. Uh, they're expensive. So we need to determine what the organization wants. Uh, do they want a casual assessment just so they can find out the errors? Is this just prior to going for a formal assessment or is this, is this the formal one? We need to determine the team composition and resources and that will depend on the class of the assessment. We will need to schedule it. Uh, I'll talk about that soon. Um, we'll talk about what evidence we require and how we're going to record it. And we'll talk about roles and responsibilities of the team. Now the assessment team, there is always a lead assessor. Um, for a class one uh, assessment, there must be a lead assessor and thus they must be both qualified and experienced. Uh, this is a, a normal thing. Now, by now I, I guess I'm qualified and experienced, but whether I'd be accepted or not I don't know because I haven't done one for um, you know, a year or two. So it may well be out of practice. For class one and two assessments, the assessment team must be independent of the organization being assessed. That is necessary arm's length um, independence. Now it's normal to have more than one person on the team to provide a balanced view of the data. And this is where your observations come through and, and uh, avoiding observation bias. Now, we've got the team, we plan it all out, we go collect the data. We collect the evidence that the process outcomes are being achieved or are not being achieved, as the case may be, and we collect uh, objective evidence that the higher level capability outcomes are being achieved. Now that might sound a bit strange, but in any process with the ISO model, you have um, process outcomes that are specific to that process, and, and you, you determine whether they are being achieved. Then you have process outcomes that are general to all processes and this is the outcomes for levels 2, 3, 4 and 5 and they're the same across all of the um, processes. Usually what happens 
is um, uh, you assess the high level outcomes uh, once and you check that they're being done uh, or they are relevant to the, the specific process um, that you might be looking at at the time. But they're common across all of the processes. The level one outcomes are uh, specific to the process and you check those for each process. Now, you have to collect the evidence. There must be uh, provable evidence as there should be for any, any audit. Now this can be, um, uh, you've seen something and you, you can say I've seen it and you record where it is so that it can be uh, traced and that somebody else can come through and, and uh, go and check your evidence. It can be uh, the existence of some physical artifact, usually a document or a file or something of that nature, which can be um, collected, stored, saved, and, and uh, reviewed by someone else. Or it could be an attestation. That is, you ask somebody, do you do this? And they say, yes, we do do this. Um, and you've got no reason to disbelieve them. Uh, you've got, um, you know, basically you believe what they say and that's an attestation. Um, attestation on its own is not sufficient. An attestation must be backed up with some other form of evidence. Now, if you collected all the evidence, how do we interpret the results? Well, data for each process are examined to determine the rating for each process attribute. And the ratings are that the outcome is not achieved, or is partially achieved, largely achieved, or fully achieved. Now, fully achieved is that uh, everything that was intended to be achieved for that particular outcome is being achieved. All right? Not achieved, there's no evidence of it, of it at all. Largely achieved is that whatever was supposed to be produced is, and it's largely right, but there are some minor faults in it. Okay? And with some minor correction, they could remove those faults. That's largely achieved. Partially achieved is, well, they're producing something, but there are some fundamental flaws with whatever it is they're producing, and it won't be fixed with just a simple change. So we determine the capability level through examining uh, how many of these outcomes are achieved and to what degree they're achieved. There should be an assessment record, and the assessment record is the collection of all of the observations, all of the ratings, and um, everything. It's a whole lot. Now, the assessment record should include the recorded purpose of why you did the assessment and what, what the client wanted, the scope, so it's very clear what you did and did not assess, who the team were, what the measurement framework was. This is important because there are different measurement frameworks you could use, and you could use um, the SPICE process assessment method with different uh, measurement frameworks. The data gathering approach. Uh, some samples of typical evidence, the assessment results, and any recommendations arising from those results, uh, which is where your improvement comes in. So that's where it comes in there. So the summary then for a SPICE process assessment is that process assessments can be informal or highly formal. It depends what's required. There is a formal process assessment methods to avoid bias, and there is a there is just a, an ordinary process system process.